This is the Palo Alto Networks video tutorial. My name is Joe Delio and I'm a solutions engineer from the Palo Alto Networks community team. In today's video I will be talking about how to configure URL filtering. This video will be the first video in a series talking about URL filtering. This video is designed to help you better understand and configure URL filtering on PanOS 6.1. We will be covering the following topics in this video tutorial as we need to understand all the parts that make up URL filtering. The first is what is URL filtering? Second, URL filtering vendors. Third is licensing and updates. Fourth is URL filtering components. Next is the URL filtering profiles, response pages, the order of inspection. The eighth step is going to be how to configure URL filtering rules as well as what the logs will look like. We can start talking about what is URL filtering. Palo Alto Network's URL filtering solution is a powerful PanOS feature that is used to monitor and control how users access the web over HTTP and HTTPS. This feature can be used to gain complete visibility and control over the traffic that traverses your firewall and to be able to safely enable and control how your users access the web. Next, we have the URL filtering vendors. We have BrightCloud and PanDB. BrightCloud is a vendor that we used in the past. It's still supported, but is no longer the default vendor when it comes to URL filtering. PanDB is a proprietary Palo Alto Networks URL filtering database, and that is the default now. The third step here is to look at the licensing and updates. We also need to ensure that you already have the following in place. You need to make sure that you have a valid URL filtering license, it either needs to be BrightCloud or PanDB, and you need to make sure that the dynamic updates have been completed. I can show you here in the GUI. Inside of the GUI here on the main screen, you can look for the URL filtering version here. If it starts with the date 2015, 06, etc., that is actually PanDB. You can go into the device and inside the licensing section to verify which URL filtering vendor you currently have active. Inside of here you'll see how BrightCloud is listed but it is not active but you'll see PanDB is active and if you need to you can actually download the newer seed file but if you see on the main screen here that the date is correct so we don't need to do anything there. For more information on activating the licenses for the URL filtering, please refer to any links that I provide inside of the transcript, as well as the admin guide should have information on that also. If you do have BrightCloud for the URL filtering, if you go to the device, dynamic updates, you'll actually see that there will be a section listed for URL filtering updates. You can check now to see if you need to download anything for that there. The fourth item is URL filtering components. The rules actually can contain a URL category. Each website defined inside the URL filtering database is assigned one of approximately 60 different URL categories. There are two ways to make use of the URL categorization on the firewall. You can use it to block or allow traffic based on the URL category, or you can match the traffic based on the URL category for policy enforcement. By grouping websites into categories, it makes it easy to define actions based upon certain types of websites. In addition to the standard URL categories, there are three additional categories, not resolved, private IP addresses, and unknown, and these will show up whenever the normal 60 different or so different categories are not going to be listed. Next to the fifth step is URL filtering profile. The URL filtering profile has certain actions when different categories are identified. This can be alert, allow, you can block the content, it will display a block page, Continue is an option. It will actually have a page that the user has to click continue. An override function, a page is actually displayed to the user with an option to enter an override password or no action at all. You have block and allow lists inside the URL filtering policy. Safe search enforcement, whether you want to enable that. Different container pages and HTTP header logging options. 
The URL filtering response pages is the sixth step here. I already mentioned about block continue and override. These are the actual response pages that can be selected and modified to display different contents. Uh, we also have the safe search block page here, which if safe search is enabled on the firewall, but the client does not have their settings set to strict, then they will see this while browsing. Seventh step here is the order in which the URL filtering profiles are checked. By default, the URL filtering traffic that goes through the data plane first checks the block list, then it checks the allow list. If you have any custom for both the block or the allow list, then custom categories that you may have created are checked. Next on the fourth step, the data plane URL cache is checked. The traffic will then go to the management plane. It will check the URL cache on the management plane. And then lastly, if the URL is not listed there and cannot be found, it does check the URL cloud database for that URL. The eighth step here is to how to configure the URL filtering rules. The recommended practice for deploying URL filtering in your organization is usually to first start with a passive URL filtering profile that will alert on most categories. After setting the alert action, you can then monitor the web activity for a few days to determine patterns in web traffic. After doing so, then you can make decisions based upon websites and website categories that should be controlled. We will cover more advanced URL filtering rules and policies in the next video, which will include monitoring web activity, advanced URL filtering, decryption, and safe search features. One quick note that the default URL filtering profile is set to allow access to all URL categories except for the following threat prone categories, which are block, which is abused drugs, adult, gambling, hacking, malware, phishing, questionable, and weapons. As best practice, when you need a custom URL filtering profile, clone the default profile rather than creating a new one to preserve these settings. In the procedure that follows, threat-prone sites will be set to block, and the other categories will be set to alert, which means that this will cause all websites' traffic to be logged. This may potentially create a large amount of log files, so it's best to do this for the initial monitoring purposes to determine the types of websites that your users are accessing. After determining the categories that your company approves of, those categories should then be set to allow, which will not generate logs. You can also reduce the URL filtering logs by enabling the log container page only in the option of the URL filtering profile so that only the main page matches the category will be logged and not subsequent pages and categories that may be loaded within the container page. Inside the GUI, please click on Objects, then to Security Profiles, URL Filtering, Inside here, create a new filtering profile by selecting the default policy here and clicking clone at the bottom of the window. This will create a brand new URL filtering profile that's going to be located at the bottom of the screen. You can click on the default one name and change it. We'll be using URL monitoring. For this. Inside the GUI here, you can see the categories and the options that I referred to before. The block list, which by default will block, but you can actually change that to make it continue override or alert. The allow list is your whitelist that you can put in URLs to this list here that will be whitelisted. You have an option here for the settings. This is where you can log the container page or enable the safe search enforcement, as well as your options for HTTP header logging for the user agent, or refer or the X forward for information. Because we're monitoring with this profile, we need to set the action of the categories to alert. By default, the categories will be listed alphabetically. Because we have retained the threat prone sites, you will see the action of some of the sites is set to block. This action column is also sortable, which you can click on the word action and you'll see how the categories will change the order. You will now see allow in the action column. 
This will order the categories, making it easy to know which ones are different for the action column. To select all the items in the category list, click the checkbox to the left of the category name. This will highlight all categories. If you need to select just a few categories, then you can check the first category name. Scroll down. We see where the block list ends. Hold Shift on, click on the category name, and it will select all of those items there. If you ended up selecting more categories than you wanted to, you can use the Control key to unselect certain categories one at a time. Next, you need to actually change the action by going to the to the right of the action, click on the arrow down. You can set all actions here to certain functions to allow it to block alert, or just the selected items you can select to alert there. Notice also if you have any custom URL categories, it will be listed with an asterisk, and these can both be changed also. If you're using a Mac, you can do the same functions by using the Shift and the Command keys. Click OK when we're done here. Next, we need to apply the URL filtering profile that we just created to the security policy rules that allow traffic out to the Internet for users. You can do this by going to Policies, inside of the Security Policy, select the rule that allows your outbound Internet access, go into the Actions column. For the URL filtering, select the URL monitoring profile that we created, OK, and Commit. Once that's complete, now to see the logs, we'll go into the Monitor tab and URL filtering. Inside of here, this is where we'll see all of the categories, the URLs, from and to zone, source, destination, what application was used, as well as the action that was performed. For detailed information about any one of these entries, click on the magnifying glass. Inside here, this is where you can see the URL category that's listed. If you have any issues with it, you think it's incorrect, you can always request categorization change underneath the details where you can change the suggested category to whatever you'd like. If you do not see the category for the URL filtering, you just need to hit a drop down next to any of the category titles, go to columns, and to make sure that you check next to category, and this will turn it on and off the URL filtering category. Again, also, if you think that you're receiving too many entries inside of your URL filtering logs, you can go into objects, URL filtering, scroll down to your filtering profile that you're using inside settings. Make sure that you only have log container page checked there. For more information on how to configure URL filtering in document form, please see the transcript that will have links to all the admin guides for version 5.0, 6.0, 6.1, and 7.0. That concludes this video tutorial. We hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.